So what I'm going to talk, Jacques, is about uh, some uh, CMB experiment which is going on in Rome, I mean, which is uh, coordinated in, by Rome, uh, which is going on uh, uh, in Europe uh, with some contribution from the US. And in particular, I'm going to briefly describe three instruments. One is three experiments, say one is the LSPE, which is called, which is the large scale polarization explorer, which is an instrument to measure the CMB polarization at large scales in the northern hemisphere using uh, a balloon plus a ground telescope. So a balloon payload and a ground uh, telescope, uh, which is uh, planned to start in 2020, start observing it, taking it. Then I will describe OLIMPO, which is uh, um, an instrument for the measurement of the Sunavitzer Dovich effect on galaxy clusters, which uh, uh, is again a balloon which was flown last summer. And then the last one will be is called COSMO, and it's uh, uh, an instrument which we're designing to measure the absolute spectrum of the microwave sky from Antarctica. And uh, we are thinking of, it's in the, in the design phase, but we are thinking of uh, 2022 for starting taking it. So, uh, the South Pole, South Pole yes. Italian. Italian station, Italian Fr French station in, uh, not at South Pole, it's in the Antarctic, in the plateau. So LSPE, it's a wide co collaboration, uh, mainly in Europe with, uh, you know, leading roles in the University of Rome, uh, University of uh, Milan, and INFM in Italy. And uh, so, again, this is a project to measure the, the CMB uh, polarization of large angular scales, and in particular to try to uh, go to, for the B modes at the re uh, rare ionization recombination bumps of the power spectrum. Angular resolution is about one degree. Uh, so it's composed by two instruments, uh, swipe is a spinning stratospheric balloon payload. So it's flying uh, in the stratosphere at 40 kilometers to try avoiding the uh, atmospheric noise. And uh, um, it's planned to fly uh, with a long duration flight, so 15 days of flight uh, in the polar night. So during the night from the North Pole, this is a very technological uh, uh, complication. And in this way, we can have a large uh, sky fraction and in a very stable environment because it's always dark, no sun, and we can observe wide fraction of the sky. Uh, there is a polarization modulate, uh, modulator uh, uh, made with a spinning alpha plate to reduce systematic effects. And there are 330 multimodal TS detectors developed in Italy. Uh, this is uh, completed by this ground based. Uh, telescope based in, to be mounted in Tenerife, uh, which um, is devoted to the characterization of the low frequency foregrounds mainly. So what's the program of observing strategy? So we will have this balloon here making, uh, you know, observations spinning, uh, the full telescope, and will uh, draw big circles in the sky like that. And with the time going on, we'll cover this trip of sky. Uh, at the same time, the well, not at the same time, but uh, in parallel, with for a much longer time, this uh, street telescope will uh, observe making circle around the zenith angle uh, to cover more or less the same uh, sky area. Uh, so the street telescope, the ground-based telescope, as uh, is working at 43 and, uh, and um, 95 gigahertz uh, to, as I said, control the, for, uh, the synchrotron round emission in polarization. And this wipe is a balloon with frequency of 140 to 20 and 240 gigahertz. And, uh, uh, okay, that's already covered. The, the field of, the, not the field of view, the beam, the, the angular resolution, one degree. The field of view is wide, I will come to that later. It's like 10 degrees. Uh, so, uh, the scientific target is to measure uh, R 0.03 at 95% confidence level, which is, you know, we have, we have heard better results today, but this is interesting because it's in the northern hemisphere, so it, it can add more um, information. This projection is made with the updated um, tau value from Planck 2018, and it's after component separation using, uh, you know, uh, the low frequency part, uh, which is coming from the strip instrument, the uh, high frequency part from the uh, LSP swipe instrument and also the 
353 gigahertz Planck uh, data. Um, this is a projection of the reconstruction of the tensor to scalar ratio, and we can see better here uh, that uh, uh, this is the uh, sensitivity to uh, R in this plot. This is Planck. This is the 95% confidence level. This is Planck. This is bicep Keck. Now, this is LSP in uh, uh, eight days uh, of balloon observation. In the case of R equals the, uh, 0 0.03, this is with 15 days of, of, of observation. This is the same with R equals zero. So we can go to an upper limit of 0 0.03 or a detection of two sigma, say, of uh, 0 0.03. And this is the same similar plot for, um, for tau, optical depth to reorganization. So what's the status? The swipe instrument is being built. Uh, this is the cryostat. This is the internal part. There is a, a Stokes polarimeter, basically a big Stokes polarimeter. There's an, an output plate in front of everything, then filters, lens, sorry, the, the, the output plate is below the filters, then lens, pol a wide grid polarizers, and two focal planes. Those, those are the two focal planes to be populated with uh, feed horns and detectors. And these are other parts uh, being machined right now. Um, but what concerns the detectors, the plan is to use um, multimodal TSs. So th those are being developed at uh, YNFN in Italy. We have uh, you know, started production. And uh, the multimodal detectors basically are, uh, use a large collector. So are not, they're not uh, diffraction limited, but they try to collect as many photons as possible. So basically, here is a plot. This is a single mode focal plane in which you have many detectors and each detector is diffraction limit. This is the multi-mode idea in which you have uh, uh, a few detectors which are collecting more photons. So in this way, uh, the sensitivity for each sensor's case, like the number of modes to the, the square root of the number of modes, and we can collect, uh, um, so basically with 320, 330 detectors, we have the equivalent of 8,800 detectors. So this is, uh, useful because you can make uh, uh, a limited number of detectors, which is good for you know, fabrication, data analysis, and all that, uh, having a lot of photons coming in, basically. Of course, you pay that with a low angular resolution, which uh, is not uh, you know, a critical aspect for uh, the measurement of the large scale of the polarization of the CMB. Uh, this, uh, this is a typical um, print of the focal plane, which is about 10 degrees wide. And this is one of the horns. These are, those are detectors. Uh, in, uh, in the balloon experiment, we have a superconductive uh, halfway plate. So superconductive is, is the rotator, not the halfway plate. So the halfway plate is cooled at uh, 4 Kelvin, and it spins. So the halfway plate is useful because you modulate the polarization fraction, so you get rid of uh, all the one over F contamination and many, many other problems, such as the, the fact that your beam, if you, if you rotate the full instruments, uh, your beam is gonna, your beam ellipticity is gonna contaminate your polarization, while with an alpha plate, you can get rid of that. And um, uh, the pros, so we have this uh, cooler at around the four Kelvin, a bit higher for thermal load. Um, it's, uh, Levitating on magnetic bearings with a very low friction coefficient and can spin up to 10 Hertz. The problem is that we have magnetic fields which are not uh, exactly constant inside the cryostat, so we have to be careful with the readout of the detectors. There must be a clamp mechanism at 4 Kelvin because you want to keep the halfway plate in position before the uh, magnets become superconductive. And then, uh, you know, you have. Uh, there is a big debate between uh, pros and cons of the halfway plate. So halfway plate itself introduces some systematic effect, which has, has to be uh, controlled. This is the prototype. Uh, it's uh, 50 centimeters wide. Uh, the strip instrumentation strip uh, is, uh, takes uh, a telescope, uh, which used to be of the Clover experiment in the UK. And uh, this is uh, planned to be mounted in Tenerife and uses uh, co coherent polarimeters at uh, 18 Kelvin for the uh, data collect, for the data acquisition, oh, sorry, for the photons acquisition. Say. Um, 
It's, uh, as I said, 44 and 90 gigahertz, uh, and it's uh, made with 49 plates at speed horns for the 44 gigahertz, plus a few uh, radiometers for the 90 gigahertz. The 90 gigahertz, uh, uh, it's used mainly to control, as I said here, mainly to control the um, atmospheric signal, uh, while the 44 gigahertz band is for uh, subtraction of the synchrotron from the balloon, the synchrotron contamination from the balloon. Uh, the sensitivity goal for Q and U is about 1.7 in this low frequency part, 1.7 microkelvin degree. Uh, the idea is to operate for two years uh, with a 35% duty cycle. Here is, there is some property of the optical, optical system which uh, is coming out very good using those platelet uh, oops, um, antennas. So uh, another uh, experiment, as I said, is Olimpo. This has been flown last summer. And uh, uh, Olimpo, he would like to measure the uh, spectro uh, spe make a you know, spectroscopic um, differential measurement of the CMB, and in particular to detect the Sunari Zeldovich, I mean, detect, to characterize the Sunari Zeldovich effect uh, on galaxy clusters. It's uh, a large 2.6 meters telescope mounted on a balloon and with a long duration summer for a flight. And there are, this, that's this web page. So here are the four bands of the system. And uh, the bands are centered at 150, 250, 350, and 460 gigahertz with this angular resolution. And they, we adopted the KIDS detectors at 300 millikelvin, developed in, uh, in Rome by uh, my group and another uh, research center nearby. And we have made the 120 detectors in this case. So the system is completed by a differential spectrometer, so we can plug in, in flight, a, an instrument to make this. So the, the, the basic, uh, let me go back, the basic uh, way of uh, function is as a imager, so no spectrum, wide bands, four bands, but those bands can be split in several uh, sub bands, six gigahertz wide, uh, to make deti detailed spectrum. So this is uh, achieved using a differential uh, Martin Paplet interferometer. Uh, we had prepared a few slides, but maybe I don't have the time to try to explain how it, uh, how it works. But basically, so we have an input signal, which is going into an FTS, a Martin Paplet spectrometer, which is measuring, uh, if we don't have any other signal from the other side, is measuring a signal which is modulated by the shift of the, um, path of the way of the light inside the inside the spectrum instrument so we have a signal like that here we have a constructive um, uh, combination of that and, we, and here we have destructive so this is some this is a spectrum of a monochromatic source uh, there is a, so if we have a signal coming from the other side of the instrument this goes in another equivalent fts which has a wire grid tilted by 90 degrees with respect to the previous one, which makes a bit different the result. So here we had one plus cosinus of delta, here we have one minus cosinus of delta. If we rearrange those equations, we have that the signal on this detector is gonna be a common mode plus the difference of the signal of, from the two ports uh, modulated by the FTS. So we will have a spectrum of the difference. So if the, if the input is balanced, then we won't see anything. If uh, there is some unbalance, then we will see a spectrum of the difference uh, between the two ports. So this is a differential spectrometer. Uh, and we can use the other side of the instrument to uh, double the, the number of detectors, so to double the signal. And this, there will be, you know, this would be B minus A, while before we had A minus B. So we have those two methods. So this is a simulation of the results which can achieve, we can, we can uh, achieve. This is the um, simulated spectrum of a, of a galaxy cluster where we have thermal Sunari Zedovich effect, dust, CMB, and non-thermal Sunari Zedovich effect. And here is the level of the measurement that we hope to make. And this is the reconstructed uh, parameters. Uh, as I said, it was flown. So this is the trajectory over the North Pole. Uh, those are the detectors. This is in flight tuning of the kids' detectors. 
and uh, um, what's the status of that? So um, we had, well, I've come to that. So the kids detector have been tuned and operated in the stratosphere for the first time. This is a good thing because as uh, I said before, balloons are good to test technology that you wanna use for um, spacecraft, for uh, space uh, telescopes. The data have been collected and recovered. There was a big telemetry problem. So basically we could operate only during the line of sight view of the telescope. So uh, basically the payload went uncontrolled for most of the time. So, and in any case, we have uh, collected the data, we have uh, recovered the instrument and the data, and there is a paper in preparation which will be mainly focused on detector performance, uh, and then we, try, we will try to get also some uh, sky scientific data. Uh, the payload has been recovered, it's, it's in refurbishing phase and to be ready for our next flight. Okay, last instrument I would like to present, this is for the, to measure the uh, absolute spectrum of the sky in the microwave. And uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, to try to go into uh, this other dimension of the possible observation. So we uh, have to make a spectrum. So uh, the idea is to use uh, an, a, a spectrometer similar to the one I described before, the differential spectrometer with the two difference. One is that it, it will be cold at 4, 4, 10 Kelvin. So we reduce the emission, and uh, the other difference is that uh, um, it will have one of the two ports with a, um, an absolute calibrator, so a stable black body, uh, 2.7 Kelvin, which uh, will give you us a reference. So uh, the idea is that the, spec the measured spectrum will be the difference between the sky and the black body uh, at, at this reference temperature times is emissivity. So this is, will have to be very well built. Um, cold optics, as I said, we are using cold optics uh, uh, developed in Milan and in Cardiff, and the full uh, FTS will be cold. Uh, for detectors, we are planning to use the same detectors that we are using for Olympo, so this is something that is uh, well under, well, enough under control. And uh, to get rid of the atmosphere will be, of course, a satellite would be the best, but uh, Antarctica is uh, a very good place and uh, we have access to this uh, Italian base in the plateau, which has very good uh, air quality. The observing strategy, it's critical because we want to get rid of the atmosphere. So the plan is to have a flat mirror, to have a flat mirror, slightly wedged, the spinning. So basically spinning this mirror, we will, make a circle like that in the sky. So we will observe uh, the, the sky uh, with, and the atmosphere at different elevations. So those are post different configuration, tilting at different elevations. And so if we make a spectrum at a constant elevation of the um, CMB plus foreground plus atmosphere, we get something like that. Okay, if we move, this is at 80 degrees of elevation. If, if we move a bit up and a bit down uh, very fast, uh, changing, spinning this telescope, then this spectrum will be somehow, uh, we'll see those wiggles that are coming up from the fact that we are moving between uh, minimum elevation where we will have more atmosphere and less and maximum elevation where we will have less atmosphere. So uh, since the air mass as a uh, known dependence uh, as, a, as, a, 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 as, a, as a function of the elevation, the idea is to extrapolate that to zero mass and get a spectrum of the sky outside of the atmosphere. Now, the problem is that the atmosphere is changing rapidly. So in order to uh, you know, do this kind of measurement, everything has to be very fast. And in particular, we have calculated that we have we will have to spin this big mirror at uh, 2,500 round per minute. So this is a very fast moving. Anyway, that's the idea. So if we take data at, uh, you know, around the zenith, 80 plus or minus 10, we will have small differences. So that, that will be, the idea is to extrapolate to zero mass. This is zero uh, tau, zero, zero optical uh, depth, to say. And so this is, uh, clearly difficult. If we go a bit lower in elevation, then we have a longer leverage. Uh, so uh, the, the idea is to try to measure this 
amplitude here. So this is very challenging, but uh, um, it's interesting because this is you know, going uh, towards a uh, new kind of measurement. So let me summarize. We had this uh, LSP, which is for B modes uh, between 140 and, well, sorry, in fact, it's 44 and 240 gigahertz, uh, one degree resolution planned to start, uh, I say, December 2020 here. Uh, in the northern hemisphere, to we'll, we'll go for an R of uh, 0 0.03 at 95 per, per, uh, confidence level. We have Olimpo, which was flown, and it's in refurbishing phase. And we have this plan for Cosmo, which uh, uh, is in the study phase and is trying to pave the road for more expensive and maybe space-based instrumentation to measure the uh, distortion of the monopole of the CMB. Our group is also involved in other instruments like Cubic, Pilot, uh, Lightbird, and had a leading role in all the CMB proposal to ESA, and it's ready to collaborate with India for uh, CMB Bharat and other efforts. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Francesco, in particular for being in, on time. <laughs> um, so we have time for a few questions. So what did? So oh, sorry, uh, Rashid. Rashid, go ahead. Go ahead. I have very simple question. Uh, there will be a second flight of Olympo, as I understood, and when it's scheduled next year or? You really don't know yet. We we need to get funding for that. So that, that's a money problem more than anything else. So the Italian Space Agency is not giving us answers. So we are looking also in other uh, possibilities. But the instrument is in good shape. We have to refurbish a few things. We have to solve this elementary issue. So there is work to do. But the main problem is uh, money at the moment. Rito Van, go ahead. Um, so I had a question about the last thing, Cosmo. That sounds very ambitious. Um, the? Cosmo, yeah. last thing. So how well can you make a black body? That yeah, that's, that's a very good point. So we had some experience in the past to try to make you know, a black body. And uh, this is, that, that will be a critical point and uh, it's, it's under study. I, I, I can't give you an answer now, uh, but um, of course it will have to be better than what you want to measure so, so is the target or at least very well characterized so is the target to benchmark with like the virus scoby virus black body? better than that better than that okay all right thanks other questions so i have one uh, about cosmo you didn't show any uh, any forecasts of the sensitivity you expect to achieve I think for the moment, the kind of simulation is very simplified. So it, that's more a concept uh, idea. So we need to make uh, a work in which we, you know, propagate all the, all the effects and everything uh, uh, down to the scientific results. So, um, yeah, no, I thought there was some number, predicted number, but I think it's... I don't have predicted numbers here. So at the moment, we don't have a prediction. The idea is to do, you know, to go, it, very, it depends very much on systematic effects rather than on sensitivity. So this is, will be dominated by the quality of the black body, by the atmosphere, the, the ability to remove the atmosphere. So those effects, uh, they have all to be simulated. And uh, so this is something we are working on. In terms of sensitivity, uh, you know, we plan to do a very long measurement, so this is not um, our major concern. Shaul had a question. So, just to elaborate about this a little bit, what is the long-term vision? Is the vision that ground-based spectrum uh, at the level that we need for a new Y detection or mu detection? Is that sort of the long-term vision that that should be so, able well, to enable that? Not really. I think, I think the long-term vision here is to uh, go to space, go to space. So we are trying to start uh, developing the technology uh, for, you know, a ground base, starting from a ground base measurement, maybe going to a balloon version of this, which will 
once we have the instrument set up, that will be, you know, benefiting from much lower atmosphere contamination. And then maybe to, to space. So I think, uh, I don't know, about the ambition to measure uh, with good quality this kind of uh, signal for, from ground, uh, I think this is, uh, I don't know if this is possible. We are working on a paper to try to, as we were discussing, to try to put all the uh, systematic in and try to propagate that and see what's, uh, what can be done from ground in terms of noise, but mainly of systematic effects. Okay, so if there are no questions, uh, let's thank uh, Francesco again and then move to the discussion.